man. So I'm getting ready to play for you the press conference by the Hoover PD. The, the chief of police spoke on their investigation thus far in the Carly Russell situation. And I'm going to tell you right now, Carly Russell better be praying that they don't come and arrest her ass. Because based on what they said, she was fucking lying. The entire time she was lying. I'm going to play the entire press conference, but just a quick summary of what he's going to discuss. You're going to hear her 911 phone call. You're going to hear him, similar to the YNW Melly situation, they matched the phone call with the cell phone tire towers, and they found out that as she claimed to be looking and watching a child that she seen on the side of the road, the cell phone towers show that she was traveling, she traveled 600 yards while on the phone with the 911. 600 yards she traveled while on the phone with them. You're gonna hear about that, and that just to get to put, just to paint the picture, just as the homie did, the police chief did. That's six football fields that she traveled. Also, on top of that, she was searching shit on the phone that day. They figured out she was searching. She was searching things about abduction. She was start searching how to steal money out of a cash register and not get caught. She was searching. Um, she was trying to watch the movie Taken, a movie about abduction. These are the things that she was doing on the day prior. She also, they said she allegedly stole some things from her job. But they seen her tuck some things from, from her job, like a robe and shit like that. And then I told y'all in a previous video about her going to Target, getting some snacks and stuff. They went into all that, man. I'm going to let you see everything, the full details as far as the, what to do the same. And then we'll come back with some light commentary. This is wild. Smash the like button and subscribe if you're new to my channel, man. It's your boy Stacy. Let go. Thank everyone for being here today. Besides me stands the team who played a significant role in this investigation. I want to thank our department, members of surrounding local law enforcement agencies, the FBI, Secret Service, United States Marshals, and Aaliyah for their assistance in this case. We said from the evening of July 13th, our focus would be the safe return of Carly Russell. That occurred on Saturday, July 15th, approximately 49 hours after she called 911 and disappeared. From that point, our focus has been to determine Carly's whereabouts during that time and what exactly took place. Let me say up front, this investigation is not over. We're still working this case and we've worked in this case until we uncover every piece of evidence that helps us account for the 49 hours that Carly Russell was missing. However, through the public interest and in some cases, public fear, that this story has generated, we owe it to our citizens to tell them the facts that we have uncovered. So I will give you the facts that we know today. On July 13th, at approximately 8.20 p.m., Carly left work from a business at the summit. Surveillance video from her place of employment shows Carly concealed a dark-colored bathrobe, a roll of toilet paper, and other items belonging to the business prior to her departure. She ordered food from Tzatziki's at the Colonnade and traveled there. She then traveled to Target on 280, where she purchased some granola bars and Cheez-Its. From there, she remained in the parking lot at that shopping center until 9.21 p.m. when she drove to I-459. Carly communicated on her cell phone with individuals known to her while on her path of travel up to the point of calling 911 at 9.34 p.m. And at this time, we will play the 911 call in its entirety. Walking by themselves. Hold on, hold on. Where, where I'm going to die, are you? Um, um, I'm right next to the exit, exit 10 by the Silver Meg, like to get off by the Silver Meg. Okay, so you're going for the exit? Yes. Okay, were you, you headed southbound or northbound? Okay, towards that closer, towards 280. Towards that closer. Okay, and was the child on the left or right side? On the right side. Were they walking northbound or southbound? Um, they're walking towards Tuscaloosa. <coughs> walking southbound. Or how old do they look? Um, like a toddler, like maybe like three or four. Did you pull over with them? Are you still with them? Yes. Okay, you're. Are you with the child right now? No, I'm not. I didn't get out of the car. I'm just. I, I can see them though. But. Can you? Do you mind staying and keeping an eye on them until we get there? Yeah. Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay, what kind of car are you in? I'm in a red Mercedes. Is that a sedan or a CV? 
SUV. I mean, it's a, a, a sedan. Sorry. Can you put your hazards on for me? Yeah, they're on. Okay. Did you talk to the child at all, or did you say anything to them? No. Okay. No. Do they look like they're injured? No, they don't. Are they white, black, and thin, or Asian? They're white. Okay. Is a male or female? I think it's a boy, a little boy. Right now? Okay, so are you wearing clothes? Yes. Okay. What are you wearing? Um, it's a white t-shirt and it doesn't look like he has any pants on. It looks like a diaper. And you don't see any cars anywhere? No, no cars anywhere. Okay. All right, what's your name? My name is Harvey Russell. And you don't see any injuries on the shop from where you're at, correct? No, no, but I can't really see them that good. Okay, try to keep an eye on them for the best that you can because I don't want you to lose track of them. Um, okay. All right, and do they have shoes on? No. Oh, shoes? Not that I can see. I can't really see that one. Okay. All right. I've got them on the way, okay? Just try to stay, keep an eye on them, but the officers are on the way, okay? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, bye. Carly called a relative after speaking with the 911 operator. She went missing during that conversation sometime after 9.36 p.m. Traffic camera footage was obtained, which depicted this portion of the incident, and that footage was analyzed as part of the investigation in conjunction with the 911 call and cell phone data to accurately determine the time frame. Carly's 911 call remains the only report of a child on the interstate, despite numerous vehicles passing through the area at that time. No one has called to report that a child is missing, and the Hoover Police Department did not locate any evidence of a small child walking down the interstate. Data from Carly's phone, including her Life360 app, shows that she traveled approximately 600 yards in her vehicle while she was on the phone with 911, stating that she was following a child. 600 yards, that is six football fields straight, 600 yards. The Hoover 911 Center received a second call from Cardi's mother stating that a relative was on the phone with her when they heard Cardi scream and then they had an open phone line. Hoover police officers arrived on the scene within five minutes of being dispatched and several other officers arrived shortly. They located Cardi's wig and cell phone in the grass near the vehicle. Her purse was located in the front seat of her vehicle with her Apple uh, watch in the purse. The food she ordered for tzatziki's was also in the car. The items she purchased from Target, as well as the items taken from her place of employment, were not in the vehicle, nor were they located anywhere around the scene. Hoover police deployed all available assets from the point in the search for Carter. Additional resources were called in to include our own drone unit, crime scene investigators, numerous detectives responded to the scene. Throughout the day Friday, Officers from surrounded local and federal agencies assisted Hoover Police in the search for Cardi Russell. Officers returned to the scene on 459 to conduct a thorough line search for evidence. K-9 teams from the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department responded to check for any sign of Cardi, the child that she claimed to see, and anything else that could be considered evidence in this case. Those searches all turned up empty. Private citizens, including search parties organized by our family, friends, began looking everywhere that they could to find any trace. These searches took place throughout the day Friday and again on Saturday, yielding nothing. At 10.44 p.m. on July 15th, the Hoover 911 center receives a call from Carly's residence stating that she returned home on foot. In subsequent investigations, detectives obtained surveillance footage of Carly walking down the sidewalk alone prior to arrival at her residence. She was conscious and speaking with paramedics when she was transported to UAB. Detectives were able to obtain a brief statement from her prior to being treated and released. During the statement, she told detectives that while traveling down the interstate, she saw a baby walking down the side of the road and called 911. She stuttered when she got out of her vehicle to check on the child, a man came out of the trees and mumbled that he was checking on the baby. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. She stated he then made her go over a fence. 
She claims he then forced her into a car, and the next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. She stated that the male was with a female. However, she never saw the female, only hearing her voice. She also told detectives she could hear a baby crying. She told detectives the male had orange hair with a big bald spot on the back. She said she was able to escape the 18-wheeler and fled on foot, only to be captured again, and then was put in a car. She claimed she was then blindfolded, but was not tied up because the captor said they did not want to leave impressions on her wrists. She said that they took her into a house and made her get undressed. She believes they took pictures of her, but she does not remember them having any physical or sexual contact. She stated the next day she woke up and was fed cheese crackers by the female. She said the woman also played with her hair, but could not remember anything else. At some point, she was put back in a vehicle she claims was able to escape while it was in the West Hoover area. She told detectives she ran through lots of woods until she came out near her residence. During this interview, detectives noted that Carly had a small injury to her lip and she claimed that her head was hurting. She also had a tear on her shirt. Detectives also noted that she had $107 cash in her right sock. Out of respect for Carly and her family, detectives did not press for additional information in this interview and made plans to speak with her in detail after giving her time to rest. Detectives continue analyzing data from Carly's cell phone that was left behind at the scene. We enlisted the help of the United States Secret Service in conducting this analysis. Part of what data includes several internet searches and the days leading up to their disappearance that I think are rele very relevant to this case. On July 11th at 7.30 a.m., the term, you have to pay for an Amber Alert was searched. On July 13th at 1.03 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, how to take money from a register without being caught was searched. On July 13th at 2.13 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term Birmingham bus station was searched. On July 13th, 2.35 a.m., a search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville was conducted with a departure date of July 13th. On July 13th, at 12.10 p.m., a search for the movie Taken, a film about abduction, was conducted. There were two searches related to Amber Alerts on a computer at Carly's place of employment, including one regarding the maximum age of an Amber Alert. There were other searches on Carly's phone that appeared to shed some light on her mindset, but out of respect for her privacy, we will not be releasing the content of those searches at this time. We've asked to interview Carly a second time, but have not been granted that request. As you can see, there are many questions left to be answered, but only Carly can provide those answers. What we can say is that we've been unable to verify most of Carly's initial statement made to investigators, and we have no reason to believe that there is a threat to the public safety related, related to this particular case. Thank you very much. God damn. God damn. Now, the police chief was asked, are there, they going to put charges on Carly? At this point in time, he says they haven't even reached that point in the investigation. They haven't even, that have, hasn't crossed their minds. That motherfucker line has crossed their damn minds. But they, they, they're crossing all T's and dotting all I's at this point in time. I, I'm sure. They can't say that yet, but I know it's crossing their damn minds. Because got them doing all their damn work. They putting all their resources together. You can have a situation that's similar to Jesse. Man, a lot of folks, especially women, they want her to be held accountable for this because she has to know, not even just about her. Oh, she's going to learn her lesson. Other folks need to know, don't do no shit like this no more. No, no. And black women, I know how y'all going to, I know y'all going to come through and hold it down. I got, I, I, I got trust that y'all going to hold this woman accountable for the situation because it's not a good look. Yes, you do not want one person. You don't want one person to have their image or their actions be overarching towards the entire community. You don't want that. But it still happens. And ain't even just on black women. I've seen people just say if any woman, period, said that she's missing, I ain't paying no damn attention to it. Because it is one situation. That can happen. 
that can happen. Imagine all those people that was out there for the search parties and shit like that. That must suck. That must suck. Um, I seen that they returned money that was um put in that was being um donated by people trying to help search. They're returning all the money for that shit. They're giving the money back. There's a lot of shit going on, but I wanted to come and once again confirm what I previously reported because it was leaked information from someone in the Hoover PD. It actually all is true. Everything they said was true. That it, as far as um, it didn't have as much details as far as that the police chief spelled out, but they said everything was true about the goddamn red hair man and bald spot and the 18 wheeler, the, the cheese it shit. Cause she bought cheeses herself, but she said the man failed cheeses for two days. <sighs> this shit was true. Wow. Wow. As much as we were like bringing ourselves to believing this to be a lie, still seeing it play out, and that's the actual situation. It's like, wow. Carly, you better be praying that they give you some grace. Because a lot of people want you in jail. A lot of people want you in jail. And yes, it's a race thing. It's a race thing because even your own race wants your ass in jail for specific reasons. And y'all know what it is, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. I'm going to get up out of here, though. It's your boy Stacy, and I'm fucked with you. Reason why, because you, you fucks with me. Hey, I'm out.